Kawasaki KD80, just kick it. Kawasaki KM100, just kick it. Kawasaki KE100, just kick it. Welcome to the Kevin Bergeron YouTube channel. I'm your host, Kevin. If you like working on vintage two-strokes and how-to videos, I'm your guy. So welcome. And uh, if you guys could do me one other favor is hit the thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. So when I post a video, you don't miss out. I'll talk to you guys later. Let's get crack a lacking. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we have merch. You guys have been asking for it, and we got it. We have shirts. We've got awesome hoodies. Look at these things. This is zip-up. We have pullovers. Um, we have mugs, or um, what do you call it there? Guzzlers, I'm going to call them. And we have T-shirts. Look at this. The green Kawasaki KE100. Or the red one on a nice red shirt that looks awesome. This is a great way to help support the channel and uh, show the world that you watch the Kevin Bergeron YouTube channel. There you go. Plates. These plates are awesome. These are aluminum, guys. These are aluminum. And not only that, these are the same size as a regular motorcycle plate. So if you have a bike in your collection that maybe not, it's not going to be registered, but it's got a nice plate holder, you can mount one of these right to the back of it, and that would make that bike look absolutely awesome. And then we got the Just Kick It right here. This is great if you have a KV75 or an MT1. It's got the, end, the smaller engine on there, and um, it'll fit right on that plate holder. So these are all factory-style plate, um, what do you call it there, plate punch. So they'll bolt right onto any bike, any motorcycle, or dirt bike, or off-road enduro. So once again, I just want to say thank you guys. And um, you can check all this stuff out at drtwostroke.com. So it's www.drtwostroke.com. Doctor is spelled out. All right, guys. Thank you, and I'll talk to you guys later. I'm out. Hey, YouTube. How you guys doing tonight? Kevin here, coming at you with a first look, and we're gonna see if we can work on this thing. I was on my way to go pick up my son from work, and I found this on the side of the road. This is an EG 2200X. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. I apologize. It's kind of chilly out here tonight. And this is a Honda generator. And as you see it, is how I picked it up. Very complete. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to have the hiccups throughout this, guys. You guys can laugh if you want. It's funny. I haven't been drinking. So, yep. So, we're going to tear into this thing and see what we, uh, what we get. So, first thing we're going to do is the fuel. Excuse me. And the starter. So, let me get you guys in the stand. But before I do, please take a moment hit that thumbs up and the uh, subscribe button. And, when, and the bell icon. So, when I post a video, you guys get it. All right, let's get uh, in the stand and get crack a lacking. All right, so now we're going to rip that starter off. Start is a little, a little tight, wouldn't you say? That motor turns over. Don't know if it's gonna make a full uh, rotation. Hmm. 
Mm, that don't feel good. All right. Let me get my air gun, and we're going to blow this whole thing off. All right, just blew it off with the air gun. All right. And the reason why I wanted to do that, so I wanted to take a look and get the plug out, which the plug is in this corner right here. So the plug is in there. Air filter's right here. Take a peek and see what we're looking at. When I was there at the place, I did open up the cap on the fuel. The fuel is bad, but the tank is good. And there's a lot of rust on the outside of the tank. So, oh, okay. Didn't expect to see that. This thing has been sitting for a very long time, guys. Very, very, very long time. The air filter is literally coming apart. Oh. Look at that. See what I mean? It's just all garbage. So, take all that off. Okay, so here's the linkage here. It's all governance stock, okay? Now, this how bad that plug is. I don't know if you can see that. Now, let me zoom you in there. So it's all rusted in there. Hopefully we can take that out without stripping out the, uh, the cylinder had that happen before all right now let's see if we can break this thing free oh well, okay that was uh on uh which what's the word I'm looking for? uneventful i thought for sure that was going to give me a hard time these plugs do not like See if we can get that out another way. It's trade secret time. What you can do is take a rubber hose, stick it over the spark plug. And then, you get it on there for us. If you get a hose that's the right diameter, hold on, I'll be right back. Let me grab the right one. Grab the correct hose. Stick it onto the spark plug, and now you can just turn the spark the hose, and the spark plug will come out. If you have it already loose. This is also good if you're working on an engine and you're having a hard time putting the plug in. Because it's like, say you're doing like one of the motorcycles where the spark plug is way the heck inside. You can use this technique right here to install the plug. You can even cut the hose down, but I'm not going to ruin a hose. I like to keep them as, as long as we can. Okay. Plug is out. Uh, it's kind of ashy. Alright, that's alright. We'll take that. Then, what we're going to do is we're going to put some two-stroke oil in that. Because two-stroke oil is the best, guys. We're going to put that in that hole and call it happy. See if we can get this thing to turn over by hand. Okay. Now I've got my two-stroke oil and my little squirt out here. That in there. Just a just a couple of squirts, you know. We don't need anything crazy. Then we'll take this around this way. And see if I can't turn that the crank by hand. There's the tight spot right there from the moisture. Look at that, guys. It's tight right there. I wonder if they have a valve or something hanging up. Alright, and when this thing pulls, it pulls this way. It goes in this direction. There we go. Look at that, guys. Huh? Alright. Cool. So now we have this engine that rotates over, spins all the way around, and that's happy. Now, let's see if we can't mess with the starter a tad. And see what's going on with this. Go like this by hand. Okay. Hmm. 
does not like to move, huh? All right. Well, since we'll pull this all the way out, so the spring is is out. We're shooting the back here. Two, three squirts of oil. A little oil up in here. Oh, you can go back on your own. Look at that, guys. It's starting to, it's starting to creep on its own. Anyway. It's starting to creep on its own. I'm going to help it along as much as we can. Oh, I just got some rust in there, some corrosion. Like I said, it's been sitting. We don't know if the generator head is any good. We don't know anything about it. But we're going to give it some love. And I'm just working this back and forth with my thumbs. I'll pull it out. I think it's just a matter of rust. So I'm going to work on this for a few minutes off camera, and I'll be right back. All right. So now I got the starter all back together. All I did was lubed it up. Took it, up, took that bolt off and lubed it. Um, I didn't know how long it was going to take, so I didn't want to do it on camera. Uh, now we're going to see if we can pull this engine over by hand. With the starter. Get these all in there. It's nice when you have all the parts and pieces already together on it, you know. It makes this working on it so much more of a pleasure. And, I mean, she's not an old, I mean, she's not a new generator by any stretch, but. All right, let's see if she pulls over. Oh, yeah. That feels good. Okay. Now. What's the next step? We're going to check and see if we have El Spaco. Where's that spark plug? Where'd I put it? Anybody see where I put that spark plug? Did I hand it to one of you guys? No? It's installing the hose. Okay. Alright. Now, we're going to check the spark. Hopefully the spark plug is good enough to spark. We'll see if it sparks. Well, oh, yeah, it's tight right there. Almost like, almost like something's locked up in it. Hmm, interesting. All right, let me take a look inside this cylinder. Yeah. Hmm. It's weird. It just seizes right back up. What's well, turning over beautifully? Yep, that's tight. All right. Apparently, we have something going on. Yep, she's locked up tight. Something's not right here. Whatever is that's happening, it's not liking it. Does it have a broken connecting rod? It's the next question. Nope. This thing is moving up and down. I'm looking in the spark plug hole. Right there. I don't know if you see that or not. I'll get you guys in the position. You see inside there or not? 
but when I You can see that oily, gooey piston right there. You can see it's moving down. It feels like something's hitting in there. Hmm. So that's kind of a weird. A weird thing. I think what we have ourselves guys, I think we have a mousy nest underneath that cover. I think we're going to have to pull this thing apart and uh, remove El M um, Mr. Mousy Poo needs an eviction. So uh, let's get that torn out. I hope we have mice. That's not nice. Mice aren't nice. Okay. Carburetor uh, cover off here. All right, I don't want to lose any bolts. I got my three starter bolts, my two. My two carb cover bolts and the one from back there. And we'll get this hose undone here. Like so. Okay. Alright, so there's that. Now we have to go ahead and remove the starter bolts. Or well, starter shroud bolts, I should say. One. And there's one up underneath here that houses the starter piece. One here. The tank. Okay. And then this one is going to be kind of hard to get to because of this thing. Switch is off. Okay. Guys, I think we got dead mice. Yep, I think we have some dead mice in here. Alright, guys, let me go grab some gloves. I'll be right back. Alright, now. We're going to pull this thing apart and throw all the micey nest into El Bucket O. Okay. Move my tools. Yep, definitely have a dead mice in there. All right. Cool, cool, cool. And some nuts. Alright, let me get this all blown out right here real quick and I'll be right back. Okay. So that's all disposed of, all taken care of. Now we have to check the wiring because mice like to chew wires. Why? I have no idea. I guess you might say they get a charge out of it. Oh, that's all I got for bad jokes for tonight. Um, oh, wow, okay. They did not chew through any of the wiring. But typically what happens, and this is kind of one of the giveaways, is I was having a hard time rotating this engine. What happens is the grooves on the flywheel get stuck on the magneto and lock it up. And see, now I can spin it over freely. And I don't have to worry about that now. Okay, so now I should have spark with that thing turned on. I turn this like this. 
Okay, do not. But I might not be able to turn it over fast enough. I will switch on. Yep, switch is on. Oh, yeah, I do have spark. Okay. I'll show you guys real quick. Okay, we have spark. Blow it up here. Okay, and now I'll rip this over. See, you see that right there in the spark plug? Spark plug's kind of hiding right there. So it's got spark. So I'm good with that. Right, now let me shrink you guys back down to, to size. Alright. So I have spark. The mousy nest is gone. Bye bye, mousies. Alright, so Jerry has been evicted. Put this back on. Like so. Okay. So I'm going to be in your way for a second. I'll rotate the engine over nicely. Grab the three starter screws. Put the starter back on for the third, fourth, fifth, maybe ninth time. Okay. Yeah, those mice will get into anything. But once again, that's to be expected on something that's been sitting for as long as this thing has. Now what does one do with a little generator like this? This right here, where it's so old and doesn't have really a whole lot of uh, wattage. is excellent for a camping, uh, camping generator. Come on. I gotta put that on my hand. Give me a second, guys. All right, so the kill switch is back on. Rotates, engine pulls over nicely. What's the next step, guys? Anybody know what the next step is? All right, here's what we're gonna do next. Now we know that the engine turns over it's got spark, and with that right there, we can kind of extra verify right here real quick. You'll probably see it a little better now that the starter's back together. So right there. Here's a spark plug right here. It's got beautiful spark. All right, so we'll go with the spark. Now what I'm gonna do is I know the spark plug right here is old. I do not have another one to go into it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to throw this one back in there for tonight and call that part of it happy. And then I'm going to check it with my hose. Going to use that hose trick I taught you guys a second ago. You can use it to put the, whole, the spark plug in, but to seat it on these Hondas, it's just easier to do it like this. Be 
You probably went to start it after all these years and said, yep, yeah, startup wire, startup pulled out. Didn't want to start because of that. We're going to put a new plug in it, but if it has no output, okay, there's really no point in that. All right, so next step we're going to do is the fuel system. So we can actually pull it over here and see if it's. Yeah, it's got good compression so we're good there now what we're going to do is pop the cap it's all yellow fuel so we got to evacuate that and get that out of there so i'm going to do that real quick and i'll be right back all right so this thing is uh that right here you see that's my mighty vac, and I'm sucking the fuel out of the tank. Looks like a vacuum hose. And coincidentally, if I see any crap at the bottom, I'll vacuum that out too. Okay, so using my mighty vac extractor over there, I was able to pump out the fuel tank. There is some rust at the bottom of the tank, but I don't think anything that's going to hinder us from uh, running it. See it right there in the corner there? But other than that, the tank looks all right. So I'm pretty happy with that. Next thing we're gonna do is attack the carburetor bowl. So let's get the fuel in the carburetor bowl drained out and take a look and see how bad the carburetor is from sitting from all, this, all these years, or however long it's been sitting. Judging from the condition of this thing, it's been sitting for at least five years. That's my guess. Uh, it's a guesstimation, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so and First thing we're going to drain out is the fuel filter. So if you look on the carburetor, you have a drain plug here, and then right here where the switch is that goes on and off of the fuel, which I don't even know if that moves. Oh, it does, okay. That right there is your fuel filter. Up in there is a screen. So let's get that drained out. 10 millimeter, and I figure for this occasion, I'll use my uh, you can see Honda wrench. That's uh, pretty gummy in there, guys. Pretty gummy. Pretty gummy. I don't know about this one, guys. I don't know. I'm getting no fuel coming out the bowl. Yeah, it looks pretty, pretty nasty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this carburetor is pork. That's tonight's word, port. When you have a carburetor like that, your carburetor is port. Okay, <laughs> so, um, Jesus, I can't even get that carburetor off. Man, what are we gonna do? She's some coal, see if this choke thing comes off, okay, got the choke part off. Um, man, that stinks. The line come off, right? Yeah, I, I can take the fuel line off. Okay, oh, there we go, broke it free there. Probably took the intake with it, yep. Okay, man. That's the carburetor line. Man. Man. intake came off with the with the carb and it's right in the way of the frame man now what are we gonna do can't take the carburetor off because the carburetor is in the uh the frame there. all right see that that's bad here's the intake right here the intake is good that the Gas getting back of it is also good. That came off completely. We can put that back on there like that. Man, that stinks. Okay, well, you know, you can't cry over spilt milk. So, let's not cry over spilt milk. 
let's just do what we do best and fix the problems at hand as they come to us. You know, yada, yada, yada. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go get two 10 millimeter um, nuts. They'll fit on this and we're going to take one of those studs out. And we're going to happily rotate this out of the way. And then what we'll do is we'll swing, we'll rotate the carburetor down. And then when we put the new one on, we'll slide the stud through first. Kind of do an old switcheroo, you know what I'm saying? So let's uh, let's get one of these studs out. You know, I was just going to look for two 10 millimeter bolts. Look what I found. <laughs> nice clean cob. Hopefully it works. Looks good. It's a Honda Cub. Let's put this on like this. Boom, boom, boom. I don't know why I have it off of whatever it was on, but hopefully it works. That'd be awesome. Seems like so. Yeah, everything looks good. So we got our carb. The choke lever here fit. Yep, look at that. <laughs> Alright, just wanted to show you that. All right, time to do some happy stuff. And we extract, we're going to extract this one right here, if we can. So we're going to put a, a thread on a nut backwards, like so. so we're going to take another nut, thread this one on, if it's the right thread. Oh, it doesn't appear to be. There we go. Like so, and then we're going to mate them together. Then I'm going to hold one with one wrench and take the other wrench and unthread the stud. Okay, I put the two nuts on. Right there. Okay, got it. Alright. Then this right here will come out like this. Sometimes on these frame generators, you have to do both sides. But if it comes through, I should be good. Some of them have a step on them and they won't let you take them out. But it's got to go through the intake first. See how it's stuck on the intake because of the part where it's fatter, but that's okay. We'll just take this off like this and sneak that carburetor right out of there, just like that. Boom. Okay, now I got to take out. I got to take off my. Oh, I got you too big. I got to take my stud back off because right here is the fat part, and I got to put that. See right here, it won't pull through. I got to put that on the other carb. You know, just thought of something. I could put the factory carburetor back onto it, you know, factory style, or I can make the same propane. I'm thinking, I forgot I had this propane kit. Um, I'd ha I wouldn't be able to finish it tonight because I'd have to get some stuff for it, but this right here would work. I could totally put a propane on this. We'll put the propane line down there and then run this thing on propane. That would be pretty cool, I think. But I bought this for my other unit that I have, so I don't know if I want to or not. But I'm gonna let me go see if I did the other one yet. Hold on. Okay. Let's see. Let's go with this. And you can see that oily, gooey piston right there. You can see it's moving down. Feels like something's hitting in there. That's kind of a weird, a weird thing. Hmm. You're right. 
I think what we have ourselves, guys, I think we have a mousy nest underneath that cover. I think we're going to have to pull this thing apart and uh, remove El M um, Mr. Mousy Poo needs an eviction. So uh, let's get that torn out. I hope we have mice. That's not nice. Mice aren't nice. Okay. Carburetor uh, cover off here. I don't want to lose any bolts. I got my three starter bolts, my two, my two carb cover bolts, and the one from back there. And we'll get this hose undone here, like so. Okay. All right. So there's that. Now we have to go ahead and remove the starter bolts, or starter shroud bolts, I should say. One, two, and there's one up underneath here that houses the starter piece. One here, the tank. Okay. And then this one is going to be kind of hard to get to because of this thing. Switch is off. Okay. Guys, I think we got dead mice. Yep, I think we have some dead mice in here. Alright, guys, let me go grab some gloves. I'll be right back. Alright, now. We're going to pull this thing apart and throw all the micey nest into El Bucketo. Okay. Move my tools. Yep, definitely have a dead mice in there. All right. Cool, cool, cool. And some nuts. Alright, let me get this all blown out right here real quick and I'll be right back. Okay. So that's all disposed of, all taken care of. Now we have to check the wiring because mice like to chew wires. Why? I have no idea. I guess you might say they get a charge out of it. Oh, that's all I got for bad jokes for tonight. Um, oh, wow, okay. They did not chew through any of the wiring. But typically what happens, and this is kind of one of the giveaways, is I was having a hard time rotating this engine. What happens is the grooves on the flywheel get stuck on the magneto and lock it up. And see, now I can spin it over freely. And I don't have to worry about that now. Okay, so now I should have spark with that thing turned on. I turn this like this. Okay, I do not. But I might not be able to turn it over fast enough. I will switch on. Yep, switch is on. Oh, yeah, I do have spark. Okay. I'll show you guys real quick. Okay, we have spark. Blow it up here. Okay, and now I'll rip this over. See, you see that right there in the spark plug? Spark plug's kind of hiding right there. So it's got spark, so I'm good with that. All right, now let me shrink you guys back down to the size. All right, so I have spark, 
the mousy nest is gone. Bye bye, mousies. All right, so Jerry has been evicted. Put this back on. Like so. Okay. So I'm gonna be in your way for a second. One bowl. Let me put that over there. No, it goes down bottom there. All right, set something on there. Ba ba ba. So rotate the engine over nicely. Grab the three starter screws. Put the starter back on for the third, fourth, fifth, maybe ninth time. Okay. Yeah, those mice will get into anything. But once again, that's to be expected on something that's been sitting for as long as this thing has. Now what does one do with a little generator like this? This right here, where it's so old and doesn't have really a whole lot of uh, wattage. is excellent for a camping, uh, camping generator. Come on. I gotta put that on my hand. Give me a second, guys. All right, so the kill switch is back on. Rotates, engine pulls over nicely. What's the next step, guys? Anybody know what the next step is? All right, here's what we're gonna do next. Now we know that the engine turns over it's got spark, and with that right there, we can kind of extra verify right here real quick. You'll probably see it a little better now that the starter's back together. So right there. Here's a spark plug right here. It's got beautiful spark. All right, so we'll go with the spark. Now what I'm gonna do is I know the spark plug right here is old. I do not have another one to go into it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to throw this one back in there for tonight and call that part of it happy. And then I'm going to check it with my hose. Going to use that hose trick I taught you guys a second ago. You can use it to put the, whole, the spark plug in, but to seat it on these Hondas, it's just easier to do it like this. You probably went to start it after all these years and said, yep, yeah, start up wire, start up pulled out. Didn't want to start because of that. We're going to put a new plug in it, but if it has no output, okay, there's really no point in that. All right, so next step we're going to do is the fuel system. So we can actually pull it over here and see if it's 
and it's got good compression so we're good there now what we're going to do is pop the cap it's all yellow fuel so we got to evacuate that and get that out of there so I'm going to do that real quick and I'll be right back all right, so this big uh, vat right here, you see, that's my mighty vac, and I'm sucking the fuel out of the tank. Looks like a vacuum hose. And coincidentally, if I see any crap at the bottom, I'll vacuum that out too. Okay, so using my mighty vac extractor over there, I was able to pump out the fuel tank. There is some rust at the bottom of the tank. But I don't think anything that's going to hinder us from uh, running it. See it right there in the corner there? But other than that, the tank looks all right. So I'm pretty happy with that. Next thing we're going to do is attack the carburetor bowl. So let's get the fuel in the carburetor bowl drained out and take a look and see how bad the carburetor is from sitting from all, this, all these years or however long it's been sitting. Judging from the condition of this thing, it's been sitting for at least five years. That's my guess. Uh, it's a guesstimation. But we'll see how it goes. Okay, so and first thing we're going to drain out is the fuel filter. So if you look on the carburetor, you have a drain plug here. And then right here where the switch is that goes on and off of the fuel. Which I don't even know if that moves. Oh, it does, okay. That right there is your fuel filter. Up in there is a screen. So let's get that drained out. 10 millimeter. And I figure for this occasion, I'll use my uh, you can see, Honda wrench. That's uh, pretty gummy in there, guys. Pretty gummy. Pretty gummy. I don't know about this one, guys. I don't know. I'm getting no fuel coming out the bowl. Yeah, it looks pretty pretty nasty. Oh yeah. <laughs> this carburetor is porked. That's tonight's word. Porked. When you have a carburetor like that, your carburetor is porked. <laughs> so um Jesus I can't even get that carburetor off. Man, what are we gonna do? She's some coal. Let's see if this choke thing comes off. Okay, got the choke part off. Um, yeah, that stinks. Fuel line come off, right? Yeah, I, I can take the fuel line off. Okay, oh, there we go. Broke it free there. Probably took the intake with it, yep. Okay, man. Carburetor line. Man! Man! The intake came off with the, with the carb. And it's right in the way of the frame. Man! Now what are we going to do? Can't take the carburetor off because the carburetor is hitting the, uh, the frame. Alright, see that? That's bad. Here's the intake right here. The intake is good. In fact, the gasket in back of it is also good. That came off completely. We can put that back on there like that. Man, that stinks. Okay, well, you know, you can't cry over spilt milk. So, let's not cry over spilt milk. Let's just do what we do best and fix the problems at hand as they come to us. You know, yada, yada, yada. Okay. All right. So, now I'm going to go get two 10 millimeter um, nuts that will fit on this. And we're going to take one of those studs out. And we're going to happily rotate this out of the way. And then what we'll do is we'll swing, we'll rotate the carburetor down. And then when we put the new one on, we'll slide the stud through first. 
kind of do an old switcheroo, you know what I'm saying? So, let's, uh, let's get one of these studs out. You know, I was just going to look for two 10 millimeter bolts. Look what I found. <laughs> nice clean cob. Hopefully it works. Looks good. It's a Honda cob. Just on like this, boom, boom, boom. I don't know why I have it off of whatever it was on, but hopefully it works. That'd be awesome. Seems like so. Yeah, everything looks good. So we got our carb, the choke lever here fit. Yep, look at that. <laughs> All right, just wanted to show you that. All right, time to do some happy stuff. And we extract, we're going to extract this one right here, if we can. So we're going to put a, a thread on a nut backwards. Like so. so. We're going to take another nut. Thread this one on, if it's the right thread. Oh, it doesn't appear to be. There we go. Like so. And then we're going to mate them together. Then I'm going to hold one with one wrench and take the other wrench and unthread the stud. Okay. I put the two nuts on, right there, okay, good, got it, alright, then this right here will come out like this, Sometimes on these frame generators you have to do both sides, but if it comes through I should be good Some of them have a step on them, and they won't let you take them out But it's got to go through the intake first Okay. Now, yeah, see how it's stuck on the intake because of the part where it's fatter. But that's okay. We'll just take this off like this and sneak that carburetor right out of there. Just like that. Boom. Okay, now I gotta take out I gotta take off my oh, I got you too big. I gotta take my stud back off because right here is the fat part. And I gotta put that, see right here it won't pull through. I gotta put that on the other carb. You know, just thought of something. I could put the factory carburetor back onto it. You know, factory style. Or, I can make the same propane. I'm thinking, I forgot I had this propane kit. Um, I'd ha I wouldn't be able to finish it tonight because I'd have to get some stuff for it. But, this right here would work. I could totally put a propane on this. We'll put the propane line down there. And then run this thing on propane. That would be pretty cool, I think. But, I bought this for my other unit that I have, so I don't know if I want to or not, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see if I did the other one yet. Hold on. Okay. Let's see, let's go with this. You can see that oily, gooey piston. Right there. You can see it's moving down. Feels like something's hitting in there. So that's kind of a weird. A weird thing. Hmm. You're right. I think what we have ourselves, guys, I think we have a mousy nest underneath that cover. I think we're going to have to pull this thing apart and uh, remove El M um, Mr. Mousy Poo needs an eviction. So, uh, let's get that torn out. I don't think they have mice. That's not nice. Mice aren't nice. Okay. Cut 
carburetor um, cover off here. I don't want to lose any bolts. I got my three starter bolts, my two my two carb cover bolts, and the one from back there. And we'll get this hose undone here, like so. Okay. All right. So there's that. Now we have to go ahead and remove the starter bolts, or well, starter shroud bolts, I should say. One, two, and there's one up underneath here to help houses the starter piece. One here, the tank. Okay, and then this one should be kind of hard to get to because of this thing. Switch is off. Okay. Guys, I think we got dead mice. Yep, I think we have some dead mice in here. Alright, guys, let me go grab some gloves. I'll be right back. Alright, now. We're gonna pull this thing apart and throw all the micey nest into El Bucketo. Okay. Move my tools. Yep, definitely have a dead mice in there. Alright. Cool, cool, cool. And some nuts. Alright, let me get this all blown out right here real quick and I'll be right back. Okay. So that's all disposed of, all taken care of. Now we have to check the wiring because mice like to chew wires. Why? I have no idea. I guess you might say they get a charge out of it. Oh, that's all I got for bad jokes for tonight. Um, oh, wow, okay. They did not chew through any of the wiring. But typically what happens, and this is kind of one of the giveaways, is I was having a hard time rotating this engine. What happens is the grooves on the flywheel get stuck on the magneto and lock it up. And see, now I can spin it over freely. And I don't have to worry about that now. Okay, so now I should have spark with that thing turned on. I turn this like this. Okay, do not. But I might not be able to turn it over fast enough. I will switch on. Yep, switch is on. Oh, yeah, I do have spark. Okay. I'll show you guys real quick. There we have spark. Blow it up here. Okay, and now I'll rip this over. See, you see that right there in the spark plug? Spark plug's kind of hiding right there. So it's got spark, so I'm good with that. All right, now let me shrink you guys back down to, to size. All right, so I have spark. The mousy nest is gone. Bye bye, Mouseys. All right, so Jerry has been evicted. Put this back on. Like so. Okay. So I'm gonna be in your way for a second. So 
one bulb. Let me put that over there. Don't go stop on there. Alright, so on there. Ba, ba, ba. So rotate the engine over nicely. Grab the three starter screws. Put the starter back on for the third, fourth, fifth, maybe ninth time. Okay. Yeah, those mice will get into anything. But once again, that's to be expected on something that's been sitting for as long as this thing has. Now what does one do with a little generator like this? This right here, where it's so old and doesn't have really a whole lot of uh, wattage. Is excellent for a camping uh, camping generator. Come on, I gotta put that on my. Give me a second, guys. All right, so the kill switch is back on. Rotates. Engine pulls over nicely. What's the next step, guys? Anybody know what the next step is? All right, here's what we're gonna do next. Now we know that the engine turns over. It's got spark, and with that right there, we can kind of extra verify right here real quick. You'll probably see it a little better now that the starter's back together. So right there. Here's a spark plug right here. It's a beautiful spark. All right, so we're good with the spark. Now what I'm going to do is I know the spark plug right here is old. I do not have another one to go into it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to throw this one back in there for tonight and call that part of it happy. And then I'm going to check it with my hose. Going to use that hose trick I taught you guys a second ago. You can use it to put the, whole, the spark plug in, but to seat it on these Hondas, it's just easy to do it like this. He probably went to start it after all these years and said, yep, yeah, startup wire, startup pulled out. Didn't want to start because of that. We're going to put a new plug in it, but if it has no output, okay, there's really no point in that. All right, so next step we're going to do is the fuel system. So we can actually pull it over here and see if it's... Yeah, it's got good compression. So, we're good there. Now what we're going to do is pop the cap. It's all yellow fuel. So we got to evacuate that and get that out of there. So I'm going to do that real quick and I'll be right back. Alright, so this big uh, vat right here you see. That's my mighty vac, and I'm sucking the fuel out of the tank. Looks like a vacuum hose. And coincidentally, if I see any crap at the bottom, I'll vacuum that out too. Okay, so using my mighty vac extractor over there, I was able to pump out the fuel tank. 
There is some rust at the bottom of the tank, but I don't think anything that's going to hinder us from uh, running it. See it right there in the corner there? But other than that, the tank looks all right. So I'm pretty happy with that. Next thing we're going to do is attack the carburetor bowl. So let's get the fuel in the carburetor bowl drained out and take a look and see how bad the carburetor is from sitting from all, this, all these years or however long it's been sitting. Judging from the condition of this thing, it's been sitting for at least five years. That's my guess. Uh, it's a guesstimation, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so, and first thing we're going to drain out is the fuel filter. So if you look on the carburetor, you have a drain plug here, and then right here where the switch is that goes on and off of the fuel, which I don't even know if that moves. Oh, it does, okay. That right there is your fuel filter. Up in there is a screen. So let's get that drained out. 10 millimeter, and I figure for this occasion, I use my uh, you can see Honda wrench. That's uh, pretty gummy in there, guys. Pretty gummy. Pretty gummy. I don't know about this one, guys. I don't know. I'm getting no fuel coming out the bowl. Yeah, it looks pretty pretty nasty. Oh yeah. <laughs> this carburetor is porked. That's tonight's word. Porked. When you have a carburetor like that, your carburetor is porked. <laughs> so um Jesus I can't even get that carburetor off. Man. What are we gonna do? She's some coal. Let's see if this choke thing comes off. Okay, got the choke part off. Um, yeah, that stinks. The line come off, right? Yeah, I, I can take the fuel line off. Okay, oh, there we go. Broke it free there. Probably took the intake with it. Yep. Okay, man. Carburetor the line. Man. Man. The intake came off with the with the carb. And it's right in the way of the frame. Man. Now what are we going to do? Can't take the carburetor off. Because the carburetor is in the, uh, the frame. Alright, see that? That's bad. Here's the intake right here. The intake is good. In fact, the gasket in back of it is also good. That came off completely. We can put that back on there like that. Man, that stinks. Okay, well, you know, you can't cry over spilt milk. So, let's not cry over spilt milk. Let's just do what we do best and fix the problems at hand as they come to us. You know, yada, yada, yada. Okay. All right. So, now I'm going to go get two 10 millimeter um, nuts that will fit on this. And we're going to take one of those studs out. And we're going to happily rotate this out of the way. And then what we'll do is we'll swing, we'll rotate the carburetor down. And then when we put the new one on, we'll slide the stud through first. Kind of do an old switcheroo, you know what I'm saying? So let's, uh, let's get one of these studs out. You know, I was just going to look for two 10 millimeter bolts. Look what I found. <laughs> nice clean cob. Hopefully it works. Looks good. The Honda Cub. Let's put this on like this. Boom, boom, boom. I don't know why I have it off of whatever it was on, but hopefully it works. That'd be awesome. Same size choke. Yeah, everything looks good. So we got our carb. The choke lever here fit. Yep, look at that. <laughs> All right, just wanted to show you that. 
All right, time to do some happy stuff. And we extract, we're gonna extract this one right here, if we can. So we're gonna put a, a thread on a nut backwards, like so. so. We're gonna take another nut, thread this one on, if it's the right thread. Hope it doesn't appear to be. There we go. Like so, and then we're gonna mate them together. Then I'm going to hold one with one wrench and take the other wrench and unthread the stud. Okay, I put the two nuts on right there. Okay, good, got it. All right. Then this right here will come out like this. Sometimes on these frame generators, you have to do both sides, but if it comes through, it should be good. Some of them have a step on them, and they won't let you take them out. But it's got to go through the intake first. See how it's stuck on the intake because of the part where it's fatter, but that's okay. We'll just take this off like this and sneak that carburetor right out of there, just like that. Boom. Okay, now I got to take out. I got to take off my. Oh, I got you too big. I got to take my stud back off because right here is the fat part, and I got to put that. See right here, it won't pull through. I got to put that on the other carb. You know, just thought of something. I could put the factory carburetor back onto it, you know, factory style, or I can make the same propane. Thinking, I forgot I had this propane kit. Um, I'd ha I wouldn't be able to finish it tonight because I'd have to get some stuff for it, but this right here would work. I could totally put a propane on this. We'll put the propane line down there and then run this thing on propane. That would be pretty cool, I think. But I bought this for my other unit that I have, so I don't know if I want to or not. But I'm gonna let me go see if I did the other one yet. Hold on. All right. So I'm gonna go with the factory style carburetor for now before I go and upgrade this thing because, well, one, I don't know what I'm I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing yet. So I want to just kind of keep it. I want to use this carburetor right here on my. Um, on the generator I took with me to, um, what the heck you call it, the rice arama. So I'm going to hold on to this one for now. I'm not going to use this one. I'm going to go with the factory one. It took me a minute to think about it, but yeah, I'm, I'm. This is cool and it would work, but if this, if I decide to later on, then I'll grab another one of these. All right, let's get this intake cleaned up. Then I got the gasket, the new gasket right here. I'm going to throw this on. Make sure it's got the vent holes in the correct spot. Gotta go and do that. Yep, that'll vent out the back. Boom, boom, boom. And then the new carburetor. This carburetor actually fits the stud all the way through, which is kind of weird, but that's okay. Put this like this. Put that in there like that. And bada bing, bada ba, bada boom. Okay. Now, before we do that, we have a couple things to do. One, we got to put the governor rod on and the governor tension spring. Okay. 
then the throttle or the fuel line should say it's going to meet into this and go back okay it's going to fit right onto there like that and we'll get a pair of needle nose and push that on further so all i'm doing is just hooking up the linkage and putting the fuel line on Huh. And then we'll get a pair of needle nose. Okay, so I got that part on. Now I gotta put the stud on. So we'll do this the same way we did the took it off. Okay, then I'm going to take that back off. Come on, tighten up, will you? Now, for something that is very overlooked when working on these little motors, it's a real simple, simple thing, is that hole right there, there's a piece that goes over the front of that, I'm going to grab it and show you what it looks like. Right, so these are the spaces that go on the front, this one's got some varnish on them, but these are overlooked, okay, and a lot of times what happens is when people put these on, they put them on upside down or backwards. So they put them on like this, and that's incorrect. That top hole, and I've seen these in back of the car, these go in the front, and then that little notch right there, that, where are you? that notch cut out right there, that big one, that goes in the front towards the top. So it sits on there just like that. If you put that on backwards, the carburetor will not breathe and it will not run right. That, I promise you. Okay, so a few lines hooked up. The governor linkage is on and hooked up. Okay, so we got, we're all good there. Um, does the governor move? That's the other question. Yes, it does. Moves very nice. Okay. Then we take the air filter box right here. on oh. help if I put the uh, well, the fuel has to be on when you do that so it fits through the window okay and the little vent line from the valve cover has to go on to it come on Get on there. There we go. Okay, and now I put my two uh, little the little nuts on there. Back on there. Right there. Boom, boom, boom. There. Okay. One here. One here. Come on, get on there. And then the bolt. That goes up in the back here. Unpack gun. Okay, that's all tight. Nope, gotta get that back. Okay, it is on there. Okay, alright. 
Then I have two bolts, or two wing nuts I should say, one for the air filter and one for the uh, the top cover when we get this all cleaned out. With the blow gun. Okay. Okay. Where is it? Right here. Okay, that's all blown out. And the air filter mount. That sits on there first. And then like that. And there's supposed to be a rubber gasket. Yep, right here. <laughs> it's actually stuck to the bottom of the air filter. Right here. That seals the deal for the bottom. And then the air filter goes back on. We cannot use this air filter. So. Okay, I got an air filter right here. It's not perfect, but it's a lot cleaner than that one and it will work just fine. Like so, grab the wing nut. Okay. Then the uh, box cover. And the wing nut for that. Okay. Nice. Fuel on. Choke is on that way. All right, so now the next things we gotta do is we gotta check for fuel, and we gotta put fuel, uh, check for get, uh, oil, and then we gotta check for fuel. Oh, we not check for fuel, but put fuel in it. Okay. Bad fuel. Hmm. We'll try it. Still goes. <laughs> Might have just put bad fuel on this thing. Okay. All right. I just checked the the uh, oil off camera. It's uh, good, so we're uh, going to move on here. I think the fuel I just put in this thing is bad. It's been sitting for a while, but we're going to find out. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give this thing a couple of pulls and see if it'll go. Off on. Okay, that was a first start. It actually sounded really, really good. And then we'll grab a light and plug it in and see if we have power. Okay, I just plugged the light in right there. I'll switch on and see if we have power. Nope, not yet.
Well, I would say that this is a success. Found it on the side of the road. The guy said that uh, I could have it free of charge. The carburetor and the, um, what do you call it there? The carburetor was free. The gaskets were free. That's all stuff I had from other machines. Um, this is a nice little 2200. It's beat up. It's dirty. It's old. But that thing runs absolutely perfect. So I'm very happy with my decision on not, um, what do you call it there, changing over to the propane cob. Um, so what's next? Well, it's now going to need a spark plug, an air filter, and a oil change. It's going to need another fuel system flush because I put uh, the fuel that I put in it is kind of cloudy. Um, but it runs good. And I have to do what I call an RPM check, which I'm not going to do tonight. I'm going to check the RPMs and set the governor to 3600 RPM. Guys, that's a perfectly good working free generator. Little Honda. How can you go wrong with that, right? So anyway, guys, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Thank you for uh, subscribing and watching. And uh, yeah, until the next one. I will talk to you guys later.